Hi guys, I am back and I'm ready to start vlogging again. I was back last week and I tried to vlog, but I just, the week was kind of crazy and I ended up with one clip that no one wanted to see. So we're going to try again this week. Um, I think stuff should settle more into a routine and I can do better at vlogging this week. So yeah, let's talk about what I'm currently reading. I'm currently reading two things. The first is Agnes Gray, um, and I'm almost finished. I've got like 30 pages left, so I'll finish that up today for sure. This is my first Victober read. Um, I read Tenant of Wildfell Hall earlier this year and really liked it. So um, yeah, so I picked up Agnes Gray, and again, I'm really liking this one too. I'll finish it up today and share more thoughts with you after that. And then I'm also reading The Historian by Elizabeth Kostova. This is a nice fat book. I just started it over this past weekend. I'm only like 60 pages in. I'm enjoying it. I'm just not very far in yet. Um, so I will work on making progress in this one this week as well. And yeah, that's what's happening right now. And I will keep you updated throughout the week. Hey guys, so something exciting happened today that I wanted to share with you. My new 2020 planners that I ordered came today, which is super exciting. Um, so I thought I would show you the planners I'll be using next year. Um, I know a lot of people do like plan with me's and show off that kind of stuff, which I love watching. I will probably never do those just because I find that if I know people are going to be looking at my planner, it becomes a lot less functional. And for me, the whole point of having a plan planner is to be functional for me. Um, but I can show you them now before I use them. And yeah, I'm excited. So I use a happy planner. Um, and I use two planners. This is the one that I chose this year for just my regular everyday planner. It's I like it. It's not my favorite planner. I mean, looks wise that I've ever had. I'm not too into the gold, but it works. Um, you can't tell on film, but there's gold foil on the cover as well. So it's nice. It's very pretty. It's kind of muted um, florals. And the insides are these kind of muted blues and greens. It's very pretty. Um, again, it's not my favorite of all the planners I've ever had, just looks wise, but, um, I do think it's pretty. <clears throat> so inside the dividers, again, you, they've got these nice quotes with these kind of pale blues and greens. And then the inside is a different layout. I've been using the last couple of years, the more traditional vertical layout, <clears throat> which I've liked. Um, but I decided to mix it up this year. So this is what they call a dashboard layout. So each page has the week is on this side. So you can see starting on Monday, Tuesday. So there's little boxes for each day. And then the left side is just space to do whatever you need to do. So you can make lists or whatnot. And I find that for me, um, a lot of things, like I have a list of things I need to accomplish in a week, but it doesn't necessarily have to be a specific day. Um, so this allows me to make those, you know, this week I need to accomplish all this. And then kind of as it comes along, I can move things into the days or put, you know, specific events on different days. Um, <clears throat> I also like that this is a very neutral planner. Like there's not a lot of color on the pages, so I can decorate it or do what I want with the pages a little more freely. Um, since I don't have to worry too much about matching the decor in the planner. So yeah. That's my everyday planner for 2020. And then I also have a second planner. And this is actually what I use as a book journal. Um, I started doing this this year, 2019. I started keeping a second planner where I keep track of book stuff. Um, I used a smaller one this past year and I've decided to go to the full, the classic sized um, and this one has this really, I like the art style in this one. I'm not a huge fan of the lavender discs, but I do like the art style. Um, and it's kind of seasonal. So you can see the different dividers. So like January, you've got these cute illustrations <clears throat> that go along with the month. Um, and this is a horizontal planner. Um, so more, again, more traditional layout. Um, but this allows me to kind of do what I want each day. So I will usually write a little, like a to-do list of what the reading I want to accomplish that day, like which chapters I want to read or what books or whatever. Um, and then I have space to write down a few thoughts about what I've read, or if I had a quote that I especially liked, I can write that down. And then at the end of the year, I just end up having a really nice record of what I read and it'll help me remember different things that I may want to remember. 
Also, there's this new feature that they started this past year at the beginning um, of the planners called Year at a Glance, and it just lists out your whole year every day in your whole year. So for this coming year, I think I'm going to use this just to track titles. So every time I finish a book, I'll just write down the title in this year at a glance at the beginning, and then I'll have just a simple, straightforward record of everything that I read that year. Um, and then I can look here too and see, oh, I read this book, you know, the beginning of September, and then I can flip right to September and see any notes or quotes or anything from it that I wanted to remember. So yeah, those are my planners for 2020. I'm eager to start using them. Obviously, I have to wait a couple months. But yeah, I just wanted to show you. Hey, happy weekend. It's Friday afternoon. I just got home from work and I am ready to do all the wonderful not leaving the house things this weekend. Um, so yeah, let's talk about, I haven't vlogged much this week, so let's talk a little bit about what I've read. I did finish Agnes Gray, and I really liked that. It's um, just the story of this woman who becomes a governess and just the challenges that come with that kind of a realistic view of what it means and the fact that the governess is always the one who's wrong. It doesn't matter if the kids are wrong or the parents are wrong. It's always the fault of the governess, basically. And yeah, it was just a very sweet, um, it's kind of simple story, but I really, really enjoyed it. I am reading The Historian by Elizabeth Kostova. I'm about 100 pages in, um, and it's slow going so far. I'm liking it, but it's not totally grabbing me. I think I just need to get a little further into it. Um, so that is the goal for this weekend, is to get significantly further in that, um, depending on how well it goes, potentially even get through it. I kind of doubt that'll happen, but you never know. Um, I may start something else this weekend too, just so I have two books that I can kind of alternate between. I'm undecided on that. Um, but yeah, I'm going to get some lunch and do some, you know, adulty responsible things and yeah, settle in for my weekend. Good morning. It is Saturday. So let's chat just briefly about plans for the day. My plan is to stay home. I'm going to do some cleaning some video editing, I need to practice piano, um, and obviously I'm going to work on reading. So let's talk about what I'm reading. Last night I read about another 80 pages in The Historian by Elizabeth Kostova, so I'm about 180 pages in now, um, and it's definitely picking up. I'm enjoying the story more, it's drawing me in more. Um, if you don't know, this is historical fiction about um, kind of the search for Dracula and trying to sort out the truth of the history versus the the legend that has kind of developed and this follows a kind of a father and daughter so it's in multiple timelines um, as they search for Dracula and maybe he's still alive who knows um, but it's very dense it's very kind of um, there's a lot of um, intellectual is not the right word but they're going through a lot of old documents and there's a lot of that kind of written into it so it, it's kind of a slow read like it just takes time to read it um, but I am enjoying the story. It is starting to pull me in more. My goal, so I made it to the end of part one. You can see it's pretty thick. My goal is to get here today, which would be through part two, but that's about 250 pages. So we'll see how the day goes. I don't know that that's realistic, but that's what I'm going to try. I still am undecided if I'm just going to stick with this for now or if I'm going to add in something else so I can kind of alternate. So that will potentially change that goal too. But we'll just kind of see how the day goes. Then last night, before I went to bed, I was finished with that for the night, but I had, I still wanted to read a little bit more. So I was perusing my TBR shelves and came across this, Eloise, um, which I picked up at a library sale a while ago. I have no memory of reading this when I was a kid. I may have read it and just not remember, um, but I had no memory of reading it before. And I picked it up because it's a children's classic, right? So I read this last night. And I didn't like it. Um, if you love this book, can you tell me why in the comments? Like, tell me, explain to me what it is about this book that you love. I liked the art style. I thought that was really good. But the story is just about this little girl who's a spoiled brat. She spends all her time annoying people and being obnoxious. And she never gets corrected. She's never parented. She's never guided at all. She just runs wild, basically, and is kind of a nasty little girl. So I'm not sure what it is that makes this book so well loved. So again, if you love it, please tell me why. Like, I'd love to hear a different perspective because I don't know why people love this book. 
Um, what I did find funny is I went on Goodreads last night after I had read it and was reading a few reviews, and Patrick Rothfuss um, has a review of this book, which is fantastic. In fact, in general, if you see that Patrick Rothfuss has a review of a book, you should read it, because they're generally pretty funny. Um, so, yeah, go <laughs> read his review of Eloise, and better yet, go read his review of his third book in the King Killer Chronicles, which is not published yet. Um, it's called The Doors of Stone, I think. Um, but that book is not published, and there's no publication date, but he wrote a review on it, and it's fantastic. So you should go do that today. Um, but anyway, I'm going to get some work done, start some laundry. See? Laundry, right there. Um, do some vacuuming, and do some piano practicing, and then maybe get some reading done. Sunday night and I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this vlog. I did not get as much reading done as I had hoped um, but I did get to I made it through the halfway point in the historian um, and I'm probably gonna do a little more reading tonight but I want to get this vlog edited and up so I can go up in the morning. So yeah I'm enjoying this. I don't love it but I am enjoying it and hopefully in the next few days I will get through the rest. Of it. Yeah that was my week. I made good progress on this and then I finished these two books. So not a bad week. Next weekend is Dewey's 24-hour readathon, which I'm super excited about. So I definitely want to finish up the historian before then. Um, but yeah, we'll see how it goes. But thanks for watching. Hope you had a great week.